G'day, there's been a bit of interest in the drill grinder that I featured a few clips ago, uh, the one that was designed by my uncle. And a couple of people are asking they have the drawings, uh, and the answer to that one is no. Uh, several reasons. One of them is that the, the drawings themselves are, it's, it's not uncommon. When someone designs something for themselves to build, they'll take a few shortcuts, they'll leave a few things off because it's obvious. And uh, having looked through the drawings, uh, there's a few things like that. Um, there's a bit of, um, symmetry assumed perhaps or, or there's a, uh, a thickness or a, a hole size missing or something like that. Nothing major but enough that um, I think it'd be frustrating for people to get the drawings and try and work out what was happening. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is actually step through this and show people some alternatives uh, because some of the, the, the ways that things have been um, drawn, called out, whatever, are fine but if you haven't got the equipment to do that or you haven't got the um, uh, the material, then it becomes a bit more complicated. And there are a couple of things there too that uh, aren't at all obvious as to how you'd best approach them. So I'm going to show you an approach for those and that way you can uh, uh, you know, go by the drawing or, or go by what I've done or mixture in between or all that sort of thing. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, is uh, doing this, um, I guess, sub-assembly by sub-assembly. I'll flash up the drawing and then uh, take you through making the part. Some of the more obvious things I won't bother with. Uh, it's important to note too that um, this was basically done with uh, a lathe, small lathe, and a, a file, hacksaw, that sort of thing. No mill was involved. Now I'm going to be using a mill, um, but uh, most of the things I think you could do with a, with a hacksaw and a file if you had to. Um, I'm not advocating it for some things because there's a lot of work there, but uh, if, you, if you felt that you wanted to make one of these things and you don't have a mill, there are ways around that and I'm going to try and uh, explain some of that too when I'm, I'm going along. Anyway, on with the fun. Uh, the first part I'm going to be doing is the base. Uh, and that's a collection of 6mm plates welded together uh, with a bit of uh, RHS involved. Uh, nothing terribly demanding but there are a couple of uh, variations which I'm going to put in and, and tell you about to, uh, to go from there. This is the first drawing that uh, I'm going to look at. This is the base uh, and it consists of a 100mm square plate which I've already cut out and put some holes into there. A bit of RHS here with two cutouts here and another piece across the top which as you can see is in, in a sort of an eye shaped shape. Now don't worry about taking screenshots of the drawing, I'll flash up a better copy later on. But this is, this is the, the starting point. Now these holes are called up as diameter 8. Uh, having used the piece of equipment I don't think that's necessary so I've just put some six and a halfs in here and so uh, if I need to take them out I can take them out but I think uh, that should be fine. The other thing that, well, there's, there's two things that I'm going to do differently here. One is I'm going to leave off this piece here for the moment. This is a piece of 8mm uh, plate and it's what the, um, the rest of the, the grinder bolts to, I guess, in terms of the, the, the drill holding fixture. I'm going to leave that off for the moment because I've got a, an idea about that rather than using a piece of 8 um, because there's another piece that bolts onto there and then the, the actual grinder fits on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to think about that so we won't worry about that one just yet. The other thing here is that this is a bit of uh, 50 by 50 by 3 RHS. Now for those of you overseas, uh, in Australia it's all RHS, rectangular hollow section, even if it's square. So if I say 50 by 50 by 3, I'm meaning a piece of basically square hollow section, 50 by 50 by 3, but we call it RHS. It's one of the things we do. Okay. Um, there are two cutouts here because there's a T-nut that runs in here, but to hold this down there are two ways that you can do it. One is you can use the four holes. The second one which uh, my uncle did was he actually tapped a hole up in the middle here, uh, looked like about uh, 8 millimeters or, or 10 millimeters, 3 8 whatever he had to hand, and so he had a, a through hole on his bench. But the other way that I want to uh, allow for is to put, is just have that on the edge of the bench and have a G-clamp sitting over the top of it. So to do that, on the front here, I'm going to leave that 50 millimeters short. And that way I can get a G-clamp in. Now, as I said, I've used this uh, to grind drills. There's not much force on it. In fact, when I used it, I used a G-clamp just off to one side to hold it down. Uh, it'll be fine, but that's just something for extra flexibility. Now, I could make this out of uh, RHS, 
but I haven't got any this size, so instead I'm making this out of out of flat. If you've got RHS, uh, no reason why you can't. This is caught up as three, and I suspect that's for two reasons. One is it makes it uh, easier to weld, but the other reason I think is it's probably what uh, my angle had to hand. So if you've got um, some some two or even maybe some 1.6, uh, you'd probably get away with that provided you could weld it. Uh, so yeah, that just needs to be some 50 by 50 RHS. To weld my RHS into a, a box section, if I just did that, uh, it would be oversized by six millimeters. So what I need to do is take off some material off that. Uh, and if you've got a guillotine, you can just guillotine it to size. If you want to adjust your drawing slightly, you can probably just leave it as is. Probably doesn't matter. But as you can see, these bits of flat are wider than the device that I've got to put them in. And the problem with that is going to be that particularly, not, it's not so bad here, but up this end, these are going to be chattering and springing away like mad. So in order to get round that, I'll show you a little cheat that you can, you can do. So if you put a bit of RHS on this side, and you put a bit of RHS on this side, or, or something solid, but RHS is what I have to hand, it supports that a lot better. It's, a, it's, it's like your extended your vice jaws. And so that won't chatter. It'll still make a bit of noise, unfortunate, but uh, it won't be anywhere as near as um, chattery, you know, slapping back and forth as it could be. Um, I guess the other thing too is I'm using a 19mm cutter here and this is coming to 9 which is about half the cutter diameter. And that's actually nice because I'll position the, the, the tooth so it's, it's just coming over the edge there and that will give me, fingers crossed, at least two teeth in the cut at all times. Uh, if, you, if you were just doing it piece by piece you'd probably find you'd still have a bit of banging and thumping going on because your tooth is engaging and then disengaging, the next one so comes along and whop and so on. So having a, a bit of thickness there isn't a bad thing. Here's the side of my RHS build up. Uh, I've, I've got a block of aluminium there, I've put my pieces on there just to square it up and I've put a few tacks in. Uh, I'm, I'll do all, I'll do the other, the other pair here and you see it's all clamped up and ready to go and then I'll, I'll form these into a square, still tacking. Uh, it's really tempting to, to run a nice bead down these corners, but uh, I want this thing to be square. If it's not, it, it could cause problems later down the track. So I want to tack it all up, uh, get it onto the top plate, weld that on. Once that's welded on, I can then come down and, and do these with some reasonable uh, expectation of everything being square. Uh, because those welds will tell and turn to, to you know, contract a little bit and pull and all that sort of thing. So that's where I'm up to at the moment. Um, so yes, if you haven't got RHS, don't worry. A bit of bit of uh, three mil flat, uh, or, or less even, or some bent sheet metal with a with a weld or two, uh, will will do the job perfectly well. I've done all my tacking. As you can see, that there's a recess here, which means that I don't have to worry about dressing that weld back. I could have put a bevel on there to, to hide that if I wanted to, but because the, the mating part runs across there, as long as it's not higher than three millimeters, I'm good. I've got the glove on, Bob, because uh, this thing's hot, by the way. Um, my tacks along the side here, I've ground them back so that they are the sort of much smaller because I want to run a bead along there without having lumps every so often. Uh, and that was a trick I learned from the guys at Tenix, so thank you for that. And then there's th this bit down here. Uh, I'm just going to put a, a bead around here to hold that onto the base. I don't think I need to do anything, anything special there. One thing I did think about before I looked at the design too much was if I put a weld along there, um, that's all going to be good. But if I had a weld in here, that would tend to pull that down and so uh, one reason, apart from putting the T-slot in there, one reason you could say that that is in there is so the weld doesn't distort this plate, it's going to stay flat. This bottom one, um, not so sure what's going to happen there. It might need a bit of attention with the hammer just to, to, to flatten it out a bit, but uh, that's alright. Um, 
For those worry, worrying about mill scale, I've actually run a wire brush across here uh, along all my uh, seams to uh, clean off the mill scale. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that that will uh, be good enough to get a, a decent weld out of it. Um, you know, and, and a bit of grinding too, I guess. So um, yeah, all up, this is, this is ready to um, basically do all the seams. Uh, and I'll probably start with the, the ones top and bottom. And then once that's all set, uh, because these two plates will be fixed, I can then come in and do the, the side pieces and, uh, and go from there. Um, I mentioned before that uh, my uncle had put a tapped hole in there for a bit of all thread to hold this down to a bench. If you wanted to do that, you could. Uh, you can either leave this bit out or put that bit in anyway. And one of the things I was contemplating if I was going to do that was to actually put a, uh, another bit of three millimeter, three millimeter material in here uh, just to reinforce that a bit. But that's six millimeters, so that should be fine. And uh, as I've said a number of times already, and I'll probably say again, uh, the amount of force on this thing isn't all that much. The worlds are cold. I've uh I've done a little bit of dressing, not terribly much, a couple of a couple of blobby bits, but uh, there's the there's the base. Sitting on top of the base goes a plate like that, and on either side there are a couple of strips sitting like that. They butt up against the the plate, and they they give you the linear motion. This is another change that I'm doing over the drawing. The drawing for those calls up socket head cap screws. Uh, mounted in on a, on a strip and that's 56 in there. Now I've made two of these strips up. I'm actually going to use countersunk screws simply because a socket head cap screw that can float around just a little bit depending on how big the, the hole is. Whereas if I use a, a countersink the cone tends to draw it in and so I get much better location. One of these strips is 12 wide, the other one I've actually made a little bit oversized because what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw these on, measure my stand, measure this, and then, and then machine off a little bit, which should be a millimetre, uh, maybe a little bit less, off the oversized strip so I get it a nice snug fit. Okay, if I can get that to within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a millimetre, that'll give me a very nice sliding fit. Um, if I can't, well, the, the nut holds it down, but I'd like to get it, you know, reasonably well, well clamped. The way I do this is I've positioned my strip along there, um, made sure that's flush, clamped it in place, and then using the countersunk and pilot drill sized holes that I'd already put in the plate, I've gone and uh, drilled through here, I've tapped it, I've now got a screw in there and now I'll clamp that where I can get to these other two um, holes, drill those and tap those and that'll be that one done. I'll do the same for this one um, and then work out how much I need to take off that, take it off and, and, and so on. Uh, but that's the, that's the way I, I, I transfer holes through like that. Um, you could use transfer punches, I guess, but I haven't got a set of those. The sort of thing that I'd use them so rarely that uh, this works perfectly well. Um, all I need to do now is get some uh, screws the right length. I may cut those off, or I may just buy some uh, M5 countersunk by 12, uh, and that'll that'll do the job. But at least that way, that's going to stay fixed and and not move around the place. This is where I confess to having a brain fade. Uh, that strip there I made 12 wide. It should actually be 12 and a half. So I've made up a new strip, a little bit wider, uh, which I then have to put on here. The procedure is going to be pretty much the same as I, I did for putting these in place. Um, but in this case I'm going to have to drill through with the, the clearance drill that I used for the um, the M5, which is 4. Point, uh, sorry, which is I used 5.5 .5 instead of the 4.2. Uh, I'll have to spot through to get a dimple and then put the 4.2 in there, tap that and go from there. When I'm talking about spotting through with the larger drill, uh, that's all you need to do. Right? Put a little dimple in there like that, just enough to guide the tip of the, the uh, tapping drill. So 
So I've recovered from my brain fade. Um, I've now added this up here. I trammed this up, but there was a slight um, variation between here and here. So I've just run the cutter down there. I put a line of black texture on there, as you saw, just to give that a bit of a clean up. I, it only took about 0.1 off. I'm now going to come over here and machine this back until I get that nice fit that I've been looking for on the, uh, on the top piece. Both of these I've got spaced up on some washers and that's simply so I don't chew up the, 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 the surface underneath. Here's the semi-completed part. So I've got these uh, screwed now, down now. Um, I've also put the 8mm hole in the middle there uh, because that's going to be used to clamp to the top. Uh, I need to put a, a, a slot in there, uh, but that's uh, for another day. There was another M5 hole tapped here, but looking on the drawing, I don't think that one exists. There's also a whole bunch of holes here for mounting things too, so uh, I'm, I'm leaving those out for the moment. I want to see how everything else works out because there are things for, for mounting brackets and they can be adjusted slightly if they get in the way or there's something wrong there. Anyway, um, that'll be it for today. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, please uh, spread the word. Uh, and thanks to uh, my uncle for his uh, design.